Good morning everyone and thanks for joining in for this meditation now or maybe later. Uh, I'm down with the flu and I hope the noises of that won't interfere too much with the meditation and the silence as well as my dogs who think it's already breakfast time two hours before it is it actually is but um, I'm just looking forward to be in a state of meditation together this morning. So let's together collectively bow down, namaskar, humble ourselves down and then raise our kundalini and put ourselves in bandhan.
Uh, I often use the talk of Sri Madhaji, which is from the app Every Day with Sri Madhaji. So the talk that she did on this day, but in a different year. And uh, today is quite special because uh, the quote and the talk is from a talk she did at Remoran, uh, the collective that I'm going to. And um, it's a little bit hard to hear and I had to find it on amruta.org. So I'll post the link later and, um, and just enjoy the vibrations even if you can't hear everything. Uh, the talk is a full hour, so we will just do 10 to 15 minutes of this. Yeah, you could come this way. So we have a very nice place for us to come to and to be in the nature. Uh, as they say, far from the madding crowd, it's very good for meditation and for enjoying your being within. As I have already told you in New Zealand, that the whole thing is ruined because of money orientation. Money has become so important. It has gone to the other end, so much so that it has created a very paradoxical uh, culture. Certain things I've been reading and I've been really shocked. The other day I read that two children killed their parents, machine gunned them in Pennsylvania because uh, the parents were very kind to them and they developed a feeling that they are nice to us because they want to kill us. And so they went and killed. I mean, imagine the psychology. How this psychology is built? with children, why they become so perverted. When we have hopes from children now, not from the old people so much, who are already uh, not coming to Sahaja Yoga and who do not see the point. But the children, if they develop this kind of a funny psychology, it's such a paradoxical thing to live in. All sorts of things you hear about rape, this, that, you are shocked, I mean, the way the whole society is moving and is accepted by everyone. They have to accept, there's no way out, uh, as if uh, that's the pattern of life. They said that they did uh, some resistance, they put some resistance, but it didn't work out and the laws were such that these children were left out saying that uh, they were innocent or something. And also the three ladies who murdered their husbands also are left out because they gave explanation as to how their husbands were treating them, just like uh, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde style. And all that, you see, shows that there is too much violence apart from money. And that money begets violence, I think. Because if you want money, you don't get it, you feel frustrated. The whole thing is logically boiled down to the point that 
why shouldn't I have it? And they go into violence. They think it is uh, some sort of an injustice to them. Everywhere you find this kind of thing. Another is the power orientation, like now in South Africa. Of course, these white people have already tried their level best to begin with, to teach them uh, how to divide. That's very common. And also the people, native people are stupid, like in our country also, that they started fighting. Muslims, you know, it's very easy to excite them. So now they have two lands separated. Uh, you can call it as Pakistan and another now as Bangladesh. Also we have a land called Ceylon, Burma, they were all connected with one country. All these countries have become very poor and there's no democracy, very corrupt. I mean, compared to India, they are nowhere. What was the advantage of separating them? Nothing. But it was the British idea that they should divide. Somehow they divided people to rule. And when they divided, the division went very deep into it. And when they left also, uh, this division existed. It's very difficult now to understand the even India is very precarious. Where is it going? It's asking for a handkerchief. <coughs> it's uh, so precariously placed that now we have people from Bangladesh who have come to our country. They are settled down nicely, they have become voters, and also they are like the fifth column. And so, Yesterday or day before I read that there was another explosion in India. So it's going on like that. I mean, it's a violence is there and one has to pay for it. The worst is South Africa where my attention is now is, is bad, very badly affected, very badly affected. Uh, all the people are killing uh, each other and the, also the Whites are in danger and they're running away. I mean, they overdid it. They should have gone from there a long time back. But first they divide and then they depart at a time when both or three or four communities are at Dagger's end. That's the time they leave. We had such a bad... Pakistan was created when I was in Pakistan. I saw in my presence a person being stabbed. So very, very mad, mad ideas people have that they can kill now the, anybody they, whom they call as enemy. And how the enemy comes in is the problem. How they become enemies, on what grounds they become enemies, one can't understand. So it's not only religion, but also race. Races, uh, this race is better, that race is better, all these funny ideas they had. Sahaja Yogis have to understand that whatever races you were, now you have come up higher. Now you are in the kingdom of God. And here you are Sahaja Yogis. You are no more any special race. We are Sahaja Yogis. We have really ascended higher and higher. And I've seen when... It's too good. That one simple one. <laughs> All right. So when they go to that height, that level of achievement, they have to know, the surgeons have to know that we are here to cure this world. We have come here at a time when it's really in a mess. Now if you are with your ego and this, you cannot see this. You will not be concerned, you know. You will have some special ideas about everything. You will not have a natural concern for what is happening in the world. Where are we going? Human beings as a whole, you cannot think. If you have ego, then you think, oh, this is nothing. And you can get over it. Nothing can touch you. Whatever is happening, whatever is so dangerous, 
and also whatever is your responsibility, you will never, never have the feeling, the concern, because you are covered with ego and you have certain ideas. So what I felt was that the surgeries have to get rid of their egos, very important. Otherwise they cannot grow. See, the sensitivity has to move towards everything, not only towards nature, towards uh, beautiful things that are in the world, but also the ugly things that are happening. One has to be sensitive to see now what's happening, what's going to happen to our children. Are they going to take to drugs? Are they going to take to alcohol? Are they going to take to bad ways of life? Also, are they going to be rude, unkind, and ego? Again, are they having ego in them? Because this progeny is the one which is going to say. So our attention should be that our nonsensical ideas should go on. Now this rationalism has brought so much sin on this world. You can see it when you go to Argentina or you go to Chile or to these places. You can't find one Aboriginal there, not one. Only if you go to Colombia and uh, you go to Bolivia, they are there. And they are such nice people, such innocent, simple people, to think that millions were killed by these stupid white people. I mean, I can't understand. And these sins are now working on them, especially Americans, the way they are consuming their drugs from where? Bolivia. All this ego that we've advanced so much, you know, what is the advancement? Taking to drugs, this is your advancement. Taking to diseases which are absolutely incurable, very low level. There's so many funny diseases that are in America that I really don't know how to go at it. And it's coming through their ego. What's wrong? What's wrong? They'll go on saying like that. What's wrong? This ego business has to be some or other tackled. If you cannot tackle your ego, you cannot grow in Sahaja Yoga. It's very important that you have to grow in Sahaja Yoga. And for that, this Mr. Ego must be controlled. Now well, let's see how the ego comes in. Is the reaction. Is from your conditionings only you react. Now you are told from childhood, supposing you are great and you are white and you are this, that goes into your head. It doesn't come to you that what these whites have done. Then can be that like in India, you see, we have caste system, which is upset. We cannot have caste because said that in everybody resides the spirit. It has been shown by so many, like Sri Rama took uh, fruits from a lady who was an aboriginal, who, was, who had tasted all of them with her teeth. And he enjoyed them. Sri Krishna's life was written by, I mean, Vyasa was an illegitimate child of a fisherwoman. So how could they believe in caste system? It's disappearing in a way, but it has entered into now politics. Other things are, you see, which are more shocking to me is this, that women in the West or men in the West think they should be attractive to hundred men or hundred women. What's the need? I mean, just think of it. You are walking on the street. Maybe people are attracted towards you for something. Maybe some boots. You see, mutual attraction maybe, most of it. But even if you are attractive, what does it matter? What's the use? Wasting so much time, so much money, so much everything, and people 
feeling that we are very attractive. But what's the use? I just still don't understand. You go on the street, you are very attractive. All right. So there are ten people looking at you. So what? So what? You are like a show. You are like a showroom that's going about. But at least showroom is better because there are things to sell. What have you got? Nothing. This concept itself shows such stupid thing, uh, mind that they think they are advanced. I think they are absolutely retarded. So much money is wasted, spent in the shops, this, that. And what do you get? Women have no time for children and their husbands have no time for their wives. All the time wasting their energy is stupid pursuit. I still don't understand. If you look at the nature, you feel so satisfied. The best thing is to look at the flowers or the children. They're so sweet. Why should you raise your eyes higher than three feet? I don't understand. What you enjoy is the beauty, and the beauty with innocence are the children. If you see the children, you see the beauty. You see in them the innocence shining. Instead of that, you are looking at everyone, how many are looking at you. There's no ticket even for that. You don't get any money out of it. What is the use? This is beyond me, really, I can't understand. But the other day I was reading in the newspaper that it's difficult to defy uh, the best man. He should be attractive to all the women, he should be this and that. I said, is that the quality of a best man? And what will they make in life, see? Are they like Mahatma Gandhi? Are they like Christ? Are, are they like Buddha? Nothing. What are they going to contribute to the society? What are they going to contribute to anything whatsoever except for stupidly moving like a very handsome or a very beautiful woman? So what? And something is going to happen to all of them. I tell you this. Michael Jackson now is fallen into trap. And you know our Dr. Wells has treated him. I don't know what Dr. Wells must have told him. <laughs> then this Elizabeth, this, this. All of them, they are worth nothing. They have done no contribution to the society. They have done no contribution to their family, to their children, to no one. What have they done? Given bad ideas to others, given wrong ideas to others, they have. Let's be in silent meditation and you can finish off in your own time. <laughs> 